How's it going guys, Cheesycats here, and welcome to my first weapon guide for Octopath Traveler Champions of the Continent. Today we'll be covering all weaponry from the beginning of the game up until the best weapons currently available, which are the Innocent and Fenrir series. I'll also be going a little bit into the Tyrant weapon series as they will be relevant soon. We'll be going over how to obtain certain series of weapons, how to farm enhancement materials for the smithy, and letting you guys know what you should be focusing on doing with regards to building up your arsenal. Before we begin, I want to briefly talk about Grade. Grade is something that you see on all of your weapons and armor, and it seemingly does nothing. However, this is not the case, and Grade actually does have functionality. Every point of Grade adds additional hidden stats to your equipment, extra offensive stats for weapons, and extra defensive stats for armor. Currently, this has basically no actual impact on which weapons or armor you're going to be choosing, as the weapons and armor have been basically straightforward up to this point. If the stats are higher, it's probably the better weapon or armor overall. However, in the future, the grade will have an impact on choosing which weapon to take, so just keep this in mind moving forward. I'll talk about this a bit more later on in the video, as there are actual relevant examples that I can touch on later. Another thing I want to look at real quick before we get into all the weapons is armor. I get asked a lot which style of armor is best to pick up, between balanced, physical defense, and magic defense, and I also get asked, how much armor should I get? To answer this question, I'll demonstrate how I usually buy my defensive equipment. I like to buy 4 of each style every time I unlock a new set. For example, let's say I have 4 sets of Innocent Armor and 4 sets of Fenrir. That is to say, 4 of each of the Balanced version, Defensive version, and Magic Defense version. This will allow me to outfit my entire team. And then once Tyrant comes around, I can farm 4 sets of Tyrant Armor, and then those will replace the Innocent Armor that I used previously. Then later, once Sacred Armor comes out, they will replace Fenrir, and so on. While this means that half of my party isn't wearing the absolute strongest available armor, it still does a decent enough job while allowing me to cut down on the time compared to Fire or Farming a full set of 8, while still keeping some semblance of organization. Of course, this method isn't for everyone, so do whatever feels right to you. Alright, now on to what you've all been waiting for, the weapons. So let's start from the basics. How do we unlock and buy weapons? Weapons can be purchased from the smithy, but in order to purchase weapons, we must first unlock them. By beating enemies out in the wild, they will drop various pieces of loot. Every enemy in the game has exactly one type of loot associated with them, and every area will have four different types of loot that you can obtain. For example, if we look at the enemies in the area right outside of Emberglow, there are four possible enemies to encounter. Ice lizard men will always drop logs, Wolves will always drop bones, Shadow Wisps will always drop stones, and Snow Marmots will always drop grass. By identifying which enemy drops what type of loot in a specific area, you can focus farm for the materials that you need the most. There are five different types of loot in total. Logs, stones, and animal body parts such as bones, teeth, and claws are the three categories of loot that will appear in pretty much every area. The last two types of loot I'm pretty sure never appear within the same area, which effectively makes them a fourth category together, and those two types are animal hides and plants. A few important things to note about enemies and loot. 1. It is possible for two different types of enemies to drop the same type of loot in a single area. Some areas will have more than four different types of enemies that can appear, in which case their drops can overlap. 2. It is also possible for one section of an area to have an enemy completely missing from the encounter table, and thus it would be impossible to get a specific type of loot from that section. If this is the case, move to a different section of the map and try the enemies there instead. 3. Some elite enemies can drop loot as well. In these cases, they will usually drop 5 of the loot at once, which can be a great way to speed up the process of collecting loot to buy your equipment. Once you've defeated enemies within a new area, you can take their loot to the smithy, who will then unlock the new weapons and or armor. The loot that you've sold to the smithy can then be used to craft those weapons and armor. Additionally, weapons and armor can be found in a few other ways. By talking to NPCs whenever you enter a new town, you can usually pick up some of the latest equipment without having to unlock them in the shop first. This is a great way to get yourself a nice power boost upon entering a new area. Another way to pick up weapons and armor is in treasure chests scattered around the various areas. If you see a chest being guarded by an elite enemy, chances are that the chest will contain some equipment that's even higher level than your current area. If you're able to defeat the Elite, you can get a really nice boost from the equipment inside. Next, let's take a look at Battle Tested Weapons, or BT Weapons for short. These can be obtained by defeating the Battle Tested NPCs. 
There are currently four of them in the game. The BT Tome NPC in the Theotropolis Library, the BT Bow NPC in the East End of Emberglow, the BT Axe NPC hidden in some trees in Valore, and the BT Spear NPC chilling in a house in Rippletide. These are currently four of the hardest fights available in the game, with a level 85 path action. But with the right team and strategy, they can be taken down by units with levels around the 60s. By defeating these BT NPCs for the first time, they will give you one BT weapon. You can get more BT weapons by beating them up some more, as they drop them with around a 10% drop rate. They can be farmed in one sitting by recruiting them to your allies, and then immediately kicking them out of your team and fighting them again. Battle-tested weapons are currently the strongest weapons available, at least for the four weapon types in which it currently exists. Where are the other four BT NPCs by the way, Square Enix? That being said, they will not be the strongest for very long, but you're going to want to have a good stock of BT weapons moving forward. The reason you'll want more BT weapons is because they're going to be used as a material for making some of the most powerful weapons available in the future. Next, let's talk about Enhanceable Weapons. These are available once you've beaten the entire Master of All storyline. As the name would imply, these weapons can be enhanced with increased stats. So far, there are two sets of Enhanceable Weapons in the game. The Innocent series in Flame Grace, and the Fenrir series in Victor's Hollow. Every set has a specific stat associated with it, and when you enhance the weapon, that stat is the one that will go up. For example, Innocent Weapons will gain extra magic stat when upgraded, while Fenrir Weapons will gain an extra attack stat. So how do these weapon series work? In order to obtain their base weapons, you just do the same thing that you would do with any of the weapon series before. Beat up normal enemies and collect their loot, take it back to the smithy, and then buy whatever weapons you need. However, from this point onward, it's a bit different. You'll notice in the shop that there is now a third option for enhancing your weapons. Enhancing weapons requires a new set of resources, so let's go over these next. There are four different types of enhancement materials. Polished stones, the lowest tier material, Refined Stone, the middle tier material, Strength Stone, the A version of the high tier material, and Softened Stone, the B version of the high tier material. These are used to enhance your weapons and increase their stats. Every region will have their own set of these four materials. For example, in the Frostlands, these four materials are called Silver Snow. For example, Silver Snow Polished Stone, which means these materials are only usable for the Innocent Weapon series. On the other hand, in the Woodlands, you'll find Blue Branch materials, which are only used for the Fenrir weapon series. Additionally, if you want to enhance your weapons, you must be in the correct town as well, so Innocent weapons can only be enhanced in Flames Grace, and Fenrir weapons can only be enhanced in Victor's Hollow. The base versions can be bought in any shop though. So you might be asking, how do I get these enhancement materials? And the answer is by fighting elite enemies. In the Flames Grace area, there are four elite enemies that you can fight to get materials for the Innocent weapons the Tumbleweed and Bear right outside the town, and the Owl and Chameleon in the nearby cave. Each of these elite enemies has their own drop table that dictates which materials, and how many, they can drop. Unfortunately, the drop table seems to have been changed between the English and JP versions, so I don't have any information on that. But, here are the weaknesses for each of those enemies, so you can plan teams around killing them. Each of the elite enemies that has Mighty in its name has a 10 hour respawn timer, effectively allowing you to kill them twice a day while the elites with Menacing in their name have a 20 hour respawn timer. Also worth noting that if you don't get the material you want, you can force close your game before the battle results screen closes and reset the fight. That being said, considering the apparently extremely long title screen loading, that is up to your discretion. In the Victor's Hollow area, there are actually six elite enemies that you can fight for enhancement materials. The two Ratkins outside the town, the Bug and Slug in the nearby cave, and the two combatants in the underground arena. Here's the weakness information for those guys. You'll notice that the elites outside of the town and in the cave are all weak to fire, and most of them are also weak to dagger, so consider bringing a party full of those to deal with those enemies. Currently, the Innocent and Fenrir series can be enhanced twice. To go from the base version up to level 2, which is noted with a green weapon symbol, it requires using 10 polished stones and 5 refined stones. Then, to go from level 2 to 3, which is noted by a blue weapon symbol, it requires using 10 refined stones, plus 5 of either the Strength Stone or the Softened Stone. Strength Stones are required for the first 4 weapon types, so Swords, Spears, Daggers, and Axes, while Softened Stones are required for the latter 4, Bows, Staves, Tomes, and Fans. The boost given by Enhancement depends on the weapon series. First off, you will always get a plus 0.1 grade per increased level, which, as mentioned at the beginning of the video, is actually meaningful and will give some hidden offensive stats. 
Apart from that, Innocent weapons will receive a 15-point boost to magic per level, while Fenrir weapons will receive a 15-point boost to attack per level. Later on, there will also be a level 4 introduced into the game, noted with a purple weapon symbol. These level 4s are made by combining a level 3 weapon with a battle-tested weapon of the same weapon type. These level 4 weapons are extremely powerful. For some perspective on just how powerful they are, let's compare a Fenrir Sword 3, a BT Sword, and a Fenrir Sword 4. Fenrir Sword 3 has 344 attack, 100 magic, and grade 3.5. Battle-tested swords have 366 attack, 108 magic, and grade 3.7. Fenrir Sword 4 has 411 attack, 123 magic, and grade 3.8. Obviously, these are significantly more powerful, and they're only going to get even more powerful as more weapon series get introduced into the game. So level 4 enhanced weapons are basically going to be the standard moving forward for a good while. Now I'm sure a lot of you are wondering, how many of each of these should I be farming up? And this actually isn't the easiest question to answer. In order to understand why, we need to first look at how tyrant weapons fit into the equation. The first three sets of level 4 weapons will all have very similar stats to each other. Specifically, Tyrant weapons will have balanced stats, while Fenners will be more favored towards attack, and Innocents will be more favored towards magic. This seems kind of obvious, right? Well, let's take a look at the stats. As you can see, the Tyrant weapon is literally in the middle. Fenrir has 20 more attack and 10 less magic, while Innocent has 20 less attack and 10 more magic. This means that Fenrir is the best for physical attackers, and Innocent is the best for magic attackers, right? Well, no. Actually, Tyrant is the best for both physical and magic attackers, and this is because of the difference in grade. Tyrant 4s have a grade of 3.9, while Fenrir 4s have 3.8, and Innocent 4s have 3.7. This difference in grade actually puts Tyrant 4s on top in both attack and magic. As a result, you're probably thinking to yourself, then, why would I even bother building Fenrirs and Innocents at all? And the answer to that question is the arena. In all arena fights, grade bonuses are completely disabled. This means that weapons and armor should be examined at face value just by looking at their raw stats. Within arena, Fenrir 4s and Innocent 4s are the best available weapons for physical attack and magic attack respectively, and not tyrant weapons. I understand that this is complicated and arguably unnecessary, but that's just the way the game design is. So with all this in mind, here are my recommendations on what weapons you should be getting right now, and what weapons you should be looking to get later. For battle-tested weapons, I recommend picking up four of each for now. You will need more in the future, but those can be farmed later. By the time we actually need more battle-tested weapons, we will have these level 4 enhanced weapons and farming for BTs will be a much easier process. For Fenrirs, I recommend getting two copies for each of the five physical classes, that is, swords, spears, daggers, axes, and bows. For Innocence, it's up to whether or not you're willing to min-max for 10 magic stat in Arena. Obviously, 10 isn't as substantial of an upgrade as Fenrir's 20 attack, so you might want to skip this and go straight for Tyrant equipment. If you do want to take the min-max though, I recommend building 2 tomes, 1 or 2 staves, 1 or 2 fans, and 1 axe, since it can be useful for Apothecary healing. Once Tyrant comes out, I would recommend getting one or two of every weapon type. Outside of the arena, Fenrir 4 will perform roughly the same as Tyrant 4 on the physical side, so you'll want to give Tyrant 4s to the physical units that can actually bring a bit of magic damage as well. Meanwhile, Tyrant 4 is always going to be noticeably better on all magic-based units than an Innocent 4. These numbers for how many copies I'm recommending to build can be adjusted based on your own roster and your own needs, of course, and this is just a rough outline of sorts. As far as when you should expect the next big jump in power, if it's anything like the schedule that we had in JP, it'll probably be in approximately half a year from the making of this video. Until then, these first three series, Innocent, Fenrir, and Tyrant will be the go-to picks. Adamant 3 will be slightly better than Fenrir outside of Arena once it comes out, Atlas 3 will always be better than Innocent 4, both in and out of Arena, and Adamin 4 and Atlas 4 will be substantially more powerful and will essentially become the new meta weapons once those come out. That's still quite a ways off though. 
Finally, let's talk about one final topic, the Nameless Town Blacksmith, Coda. Earlier I mentioned that weapons can only be enhanced if you're in the correct town, and this also applies to the Nameless Town. Certain series of weapons, such as the Stamp Weapons, as well as certain types of armor, can only be obtained and upgraded here at Coda Smithy. Apart from the exchange, of course. First, let's take a look at the Stamp Weapons, which can be obtained in the exchange by using Memory Fragments. When holding a Stamp Weapon, the character has a chance to start the battle with one extra BP. Eventually, the Stamp Weapons will be upgradable into Baron Weapons, which have a higher chance to start fights with one extra BP than Stamp Weapons, with up to a 50% chance, and they also give additional EXP. Stamp and Baron weapons have basically never been relevant for pure damage purposes, as their stats are just too low. However, they can be very useful on utility characters such as buffers or debuffers, who care more about what their skills do, rather than dealing damage. Personally, I have only ever used Baron weapons as a way to get 4-star characters to activate their special skills earlier, thanks to the extra plus 1 BP. However, it is worth noting that Baron weapons are level 60, so they are usable by max level 3-star characters if you want to utilize them in the future. More importantly, there are specific pieces of defensive equipment that can only be crafted here, the most impactful of which are hats. From what I've been told, currently the only available one is the Grey Stamp Cap, which gives 10% speed to the holder for 3 turns. These hats can be very useful for speed control when you want certain units moving in certain orders. There will eventually be better stamp caps with higher defensive stats, as well as Baron caps, which will give 15% extra speed instead of 10, on top of even higher defensive stats. There are also some pieces of armor that you can craft that give extra crit, but lol extra crit. Eventually, Coda Smithy is also where you can build special items from the Bravely collab, such as the Bravely fan, so when that eventually comes out, this is where you're going to want to come to get that done. Alright, this has been a long one, but I hope you guys learned everything you need to know about the weapons in Octopath COTC. If you guys still have any questions, and I'm sure you do, feel free to leave them down in the comment section below. With the Tiki Len Cup drawing closer, I'm probably going to try to do some content covering that as well. The format I'm thinking of doing is one video covering what units and equipment you should prepare in advance, and a second video covering the actual mechanics of the fight. Obviously, Neither of these videos will be spoiler free, so if you want to go into the fight completely blind, you will want to avoid watching these. Be sure to come back after you get wiped though, I need the views. Eh? Uh -huh. Anyways, thanks for watching everyone, this has been Shizu Cats, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. See ya!